Well, my prediction was almost correct in terms of this game. I said that this game was going to end 2-1 in favor of the Quakes. But unfortunately, good old Shea Salinas just had to ruin it and had to do his end row trademark mistaking move by conceding a goal to, to not give ourselves all three points in this game. God damn it, man. And this is pretty much for the 100th or maybe the 1,000th time. Please, please do not start Shea Salinas ever, ever Ever again because he is clearly not a left back he is clearly the biggest liability on this team and he is pretty much the reason why this team is giving up points like crazy this season I mean you look at how many games this season how if how Shea Salinas just single-handedly cost us the game and how many goals that we we can see because of Shea Salinas' mistake. And if you eliminate those goals, we probably would have been in a better position right now. We probably could be above the red line right now. Which is also kind of the, the other reason why I'm going to say it for the 100th time also. Please sign a left back in the summer transfer window. But obviously with that little rant kind of got out of the way, you know, I'm... Definitely all happy with this resort. Obviously, I, I said in the preview that if we can get a point out of this game and get four points out of this road trip, then definitely I would definitely take it. I mean, if you ask me coming into this road trip that if, if we can get four points out of this road trip and then heading into that DC United match, I would definitely take it. I mean, consider how bad the team has been and how shocking our form has been in Lately, you know, if we can get some points on the road um, and we just get four out of six points on the road and then carry this momentum in to this home game against DC United, that is definitely something I will take. Now, in terms of this game, this was kind of a game that I thought Michael Starry clearly think that he should just bunker down and play for a draw. And it was pretty evident by the fact that he decided to go with the formation that was very similar to the formation that we use against the Union in the second half. And this is kind of something that I've been kind of want Starhe to do in some of these role game where, you know, we could just like bunker down, just put five at the back and just try to see, hopefully, the one of those, those balls just does not get into behind our defense and creates a little bit more stability in our defense which it turns out tonight it definitely did not work but you know it was a kind of an interesting kind of formation um you know we went free at the back with young worth um uh who, who else cummins and also Oxford getting his first ever start in mls and you know tonight i thought Oxford actually did a very decent job um you know i thought the defense overall did pretty well although there has been times where once again our defense given the ball away and this is especially what happened in the first half and how i just see this team multiple times giving the ball away and the first goal that christian Teixeira scored that goal to give vancouver the lead the reason why that goal went in was because we gave the ball away we started the transitional attack for vancouver which is literally their bread and butter and we just basically play into their their own hands and yeah just like that we were down one nothing and it i was definitely not happy with the way that is because i knew i knew for a fact that this team once we give the ball away this is going to be very bad. And it just seemed like that every time when we gave the ball away in the first half. But thankfully, out of absolutely nowhere, and certainly I think this is just a complete run of play, Denny Houston scored an absolute amazing goal where he basically just chipped Brian Rowe and hit it into the back of the net. Now, originally, it looked like when that ball was coming in from Vaco, it looked like Houston was offside. I mean, in real time, it definitely looked like he was offside. And I was definitely very surprised the fact that this did not actually go into VAR. And I'm pretty sure a lot of Whitecaps fans will be absolutely pissed off that this did not go to VAR because it looked like it was very close and you know they did kind of showed it a couple more time on the broadcast I was watching and 
I gotta say, it is very, very close. I mean, you could maybe argue that Houston Arm was kind of in an offside position, but even if you look at VAR, even if you look at it back, it didn't look like very conclusive. Although, looking at VAR and deciding what is conclusive and what is not in this day of age in the MLS is just... Yeah, it's, it's a total guess right now, but thankfully that did not go to VAR, that goal stand and, you know, it was, like I said, it was against the run of play. We did absolutely nothing on the attack in the first half, and once again, guys are just standing there like statue, no movement whatsoever in the ball, the passing was just backwards, sideways, backwards, sideways, just boring passing, and I definitely did not expect us to eventually grab a goal, but we did, we kind of did a smash and grab right at the end, kind of similar to what happened in that Columbus game where Houston did score that goal, and that was kind of like a smash and grab situation where we weren't really in the game, but somehow we got a lucky goal to get the equalizer, and then eventually we did get the second goal, and really, I thought in the second half, especially in the beginning part of the second half, we played so much better on the attack, and it just makes me wondering, why, how in the world can these guys play this well coming out of the locker room when they couldn't just do that throughout the whole first half? I mean, I'm guessing the reason why they kind of come out that good on the attack is because I'm pretty sure Michael Starhey in the locker room at halftime pretty much just telling his guys to be more involved on the attacking end and it seemed like we were definitely that in the second half we were more involved in the attack and Nick Lima holy crap what a strike that is that maybe definitely could be nominated as the goal of the weak candidate because wow the way that he hit that strike was just absolutely amazing Brian Rowe had absolutely no chance to save that one and at that point we were up 2-1 and I thought wow definitely I'll tell you what even though in some way you could kind of say that we didn't deserve this 2-1 lead the fact that we definitely started to look more much better in the second half and started to play much better going forward on the attacking end it feels like we definitely deserve this 2-1 lead but unfortunately like I said in the beginning of this preview I knew or not this preview but this review I knew that Shea Salinas his time of just making a big mistake is gonna come like it, it happens every single game and this time he basically just um I think it was Jordi Reyna that scored that goal I mean he Shea Salinas didn't even attempt to try to contest that ball Jordi Reyna basically just jumped straight up to him just completely beats him in the air and this is one of the the other dangers about the Whitecaps the Whitecaps have a lot of tall guys on their team so it's pretty clear that they're always going to try to deliver that long ball in and hopefully someone can hit that one on target and put it into the back of net and that was pretty much what I kind of seen from them throughout this game and it's kind of what I've been seeing the Whitecaps done throughout the whole season. And that time, Shea Salinas just, I mean, he's got to do so much better in, in that contestant shot. And basically, Reyna basically beat him there. And he they put it into the back of it. And just like that, it was 2-2. And then the Whitecaps was putting so much pressure on us. I mean, that goal really kind of deflated the team. And once again, the team just, it feels like, these last last couple of games and I think this is one thing that haven't been talked about but this should definitely be, be talked about in in the dressing room from Michael Starhey is that guys are just literally look deflated after they concede a goal it seemed like this team just they don't have the resilience to just kind of like pick themselves up and just decided to kind of brush that kind of goal that they concede off and try to do what exactly they do in the game and you know for part of that that time when we did concede that second goal it it looked like Vancouver were potentially going to score that third goal it looked like we were just on the rope and potentially we were going to drop all three points in this game but thankfully we didn't and you know another guy that I also want to mention I can't believe I haven't mentioned this is that Andrew Tarbell had probably 
his best game this this game as a Quakes goalkeeper. I mean, the amount of big save that he has made in this game. And in the last couple of games, he had made a, a couple of really impressive save too. But I think this game was probably the more impressive because he had, there was a couple of shots that it looked like for sure that it was going to end into the back of the net. And somehow Tarbell bailed the team out, keep the, the score kind of at a tight position and trying to reserve this this point for us and yeah hands down I think Andrew Tarbell was the man of the match in this game consider how many big saves that he has made this this game now you know overall go, going forward in terms of this resort and you know in the end it did end it too there was not really much drama right at the end of the game which thankfully there isn't because i've won nothing i i definitely did not want any more drama after how the quakes have been throughout this season and how i just really praying that we get at least a point but you know going forward like i said i think it's a pretty good resort from us you know like i said we got four points out of this road trip we got a draw against vancouver and you know it's it's Definitely a place that we just tends to love to pick up points. I mean, I wish we can just play at BC Place against the Whitecaps on the road for every single road game. And certainly also play against Minnesota on the road because that is just the place that we always tend to get something out of it. Now, but now we got to shift our focus against DC United. And, you know, this game has to be an absolute must win. I mean, DC United is just literally on the same level as we are right now and i'm really hoping on saturday when i go to the stadium i better hope that salinas is not in that starting 11 i hope that quiberg will finally get his chance or maybe just put young worth out of position too whatever it is don't play salinas on in that saturday game i mean he is just going to to concede goals for us he is just gonna ruin the our our game and I just really hope that he does not play this Saturday. I hope that he just stay on the bench. And that is basically what he is going to be below. But either way, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like. Smash that subscribe button. What do you think of this game? Did you think that the a point was fair for the Quakes? Are you happy with this resort? And certainly, are you happy of how this road trip has been? I think this has been probably one of the... The, the rarest time where the Quakes actually had a successful road trip, although they did play two teams that are not very good. But still, it is very rare that the Quakes can go into a road trip and get something out of it. Out of it. And, you know, I hope that with this kind of successful road trip that we have, this will definitely kind of continue in these next couple of games and in these next couple of road trip. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you guys next time.